Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how the wallpaper kit for Art of Illusion works. Um, and uh, I've just opened a file called wallpaperkit.aoi. And um, I'm assuming you've got Art of Illusion set up already. Uh, in other words, you've got it installed on your system. And um, it may be more difficult, less difficult, depending on your system. It's very easy to do on a Mac. Uh, on a PC, I've heard there are some problems with this version, which is 3.0, just got released um, <clears throat> really recently. Um, but if there are, uh, head over to the forum, um, www.friendlyskies.net slash AOI forum, or the official, uh, there's an official SourceForge uh, kind of mailing list slash forum that goes on too that you can try out as well. Um, we'd love to get you some help with getting started. But let me just tell you, uh, now that we've got this all set up, I'm just going to walk you through how this scene works and what it is. First of all, this is a, a file that will help you quickly generate wallpaper imagery. It has a special camera uh, that does not shoot in perspective. It shoots in isometric views. Um, so when you shoot with this camera, or when you render with this camera in this scene, um, it will give you a, a, a perfectly straight on uh, view, which is great for wallpaper imagery. Um, the image that you saw at the beginning of this uh, video is from this file. That, that is the kind of the default setup for this file. And you can see how the grid lines are perfectly straight. That's because we're using a camera um, that is an isometric camera. And if I double click on it, you'll find Art of Illusion is pretty easy to use. You can double click on things and it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, but I just unchecked the perspective button and that's all I had to do to make that work. So that's uh, now that camera. And you can see the lens of the camera kind of pointing down. Uh, gives you a good idea. Now, where what are we looking at here? Keep your eyes up here when you look on these four grid views. Uh, this is the front view. Here's the left view. And the most important one um, is going to be the camera over here. But you can also see from the top view, it's very similar because our camera is also looking down. Um, so the top view and the camera view look uh, really close to each other. But if I was to move the camera around, this view would change. Um, but it's a good idea to, anytime you make a change in the scene and where things are positioned, look in both front and left and, and actually top uh, views and make sure you have a, a broad idea of where this is going and generally avoid moving things around in the camera view. So that uh, sphere kind of thing made out of triangles that you saw in that rendered image at the beginning, that is this guy here. And you can see when I click on it, uh, some red uh, squares appear around it. So I can now move it around if I need to, um, you know, move it around the scene. Um, but also look over on the right side, you can see we have a convenient list of the objects in the scene. And I've tried to give them um, pretty handy names. So here's an example object and you can delete it, hit the delete key, you can remove it. Here's a vignette lamp. This is what gives the effect where the wallpaper is brighter in the center and it fades out to uh, darker colors at the edges. And you can remove that uh, object if you want to. If you think you'll use it later, you can right click it and do hide selection. Um, then there's the wallpaper object. This is the actual wallpaper image. So this is um, this object here. You can see the middle of it is selected here. And if I was to zoom out, I'm just using my, using my mouse wheel um, to kind of zoom out. You can see the edges appear at some point. Um, so it's a very big, uh, big object in the scene. If I zoom out from the top view, you can see that this object covers uh, quite a bit of area. And so um, I don't run the risk of getting that cut off at the edges um, if I render it. Now, um, quick, uh, quick word about navigation. If you are desperate and you hate using key combinations, these two icons will help you navigate a lot, especially this panning icon here. Um, okay, I'm that back. combined. My wife just your, wanted to know uh, what I wanted for lunch. That was very nice of her to call and ask. Um, if you're wanting to pan around anyway, you can use this little brown eyeball and kind of pan around and you can use your scroll wheel to zoom in and out. You can also type numbers here in the zoom number if you want to. I've turned on my background grids. Uh, you'll see those under, um, uh, where are they now? I think they're under scene, yeah, under scene. Oh, that's handy, Command G. So look for those key shortcut, key, uh, keyboard shortcuts. Peter uh, Eastman, the author of the software has made it really convenient to use things like this. So um, you can hit Command G or, or whatever it is on your system and turn on this show grid uh, checkbox. So um, there it is, you can see the object. Now I'm in wireframe view. I find wireframe view pretty convenient for looking at stuff and, and how it looks and works and things um, because uh, sometimes you can't always tell in other views. Uh, but if you tap the one, two, three, four, five, six keys along the top of your keyboard, you can change these views to different styles. Here's the x-ray kind of view. Um, here is the rendered view. In this case, it doesn't work too well. Um, I, I think maybe it would work 
um, better if I had this the lighting changed a bit. So it's kind of a weird one to, to look at here. Um, if I turn that on, so I'm going to cycle back through. Here's X-ray. Here's the, I don't know what this is even called, these views, textured or something, and, and just um, colors, and then wireframe. I tend to keep it in wireframe a lot of the, a lot of the time um, just because I like to be able to see objects edge on when they're really, really, really thin or have no thickness. And you can't necessarily do that in the other views. So that's kind of weird, um, but a good good use for wireframe view. So anyway, uh, very, very easy to use software. I really like Art of Illusion because it kind of lets you, once you learn it, it lets you kind of dive in and be creative really quickly, and it behaves the way you would expect it to in terms of how the interface works and things like that. Um, so the wallpaper object. So how do we change um, the colors and the textures on the different things? The most direct way is to right-click on something. In this case, I'm going to Control-click on a Mac and hit Set Texture and Material. Um, once you do that, it'll say, aha, you are working with an object that has a texture called Blue Working Grid. So I could actually go through here and I could assign a te different texture right now. And I could say, you know, white texture, young planet, whatever. And um, as soon as I uh, assign any of these textures, what I want to do is click this edit mapping button to see how that's looking on that object right away. So if I hit edit mapping, I can see that. And you can actually uh, make this window uh, larger to get a bigger preview if you need to. You can also zoom in, I believe, with your mouse wheel and other key combinations. Um, but it gives you a, a broad idea of where you're headed. Um, you might have to actually render it instead of using this window. It's a little bit hard to zoom in um, in some cases, I think. I haven't done it in a while. Um, but the scale texture to object checkbox is on here, um, which is good for image textures. You can turn it off and it'll like way, 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 way make this texture a lot smaller on here uh, as well. So um, you can either work relative to the entire object size and resize it. So if I want this, this grid to be smaller, you know, 0 0.2, 0.2. Um, it disappears because the lines are so, so thin. So maybe I'll just for the purposes of here um, of this demonstration, you can make it smaller really easily just by scaling it there. And you can change, I, you probably wouldn't need to change the center unless you're doing some sort of an asymmetrical texture, but you can change the center as well. So really simple. Um, that's how to change the size of the wallpaper on the background. Um, to actually edit the texture, if you want to, you just double click it. And that's going to open up this, whoa, loopy diagram of how this texture works. Now, what I like to do with the preview window here is double click it, set it to cube, reset the view to the front, and I get a nice flat view uh, of this object. Now, it's not an isometric head-on view, I think. I think it's just a regular perspective view, but it still gives you a very good idea overall of how your texture looks. Uh, you can dive in here and, and see what happens if you plug different things into other things. That's how I have learned uh, texturing. So I did not learn the mathematical way. Uh, you know, and I think that's um, fine, and it really depends on your priorities, how much time you have, things like that. If you're a busy professional like I am, then you might you might prefer just to mess with colors uh, for now, change numbers, and see what happens. Um, the most common ones to change are, for example, this one that says linear over here. Um, this is found over under transforms. It's a linear transform. If you click this box, it would put one in your scene. I'm going to delete it. Uh, but if you double click it, you can change the scale. So I, this actually changes the scale of the cells module here. Uh, so if I change this back to one, I don't know if you can see that change. It does change the way the um, the texture looks, like the size of the effect uh, in the uh, in the kind of the composite view of the of the texture. Uh, what's one? Let me see. Let me find one. That, oh, here we go. Actually, I think this uh, blue one here. If I change linear over here, yeah, this one's good. Um, if I change this to 10, you will see that I've just increased uh, the distance between the grid lines uh, without affecting the other parts of the texture. So you st still see the small kind of noisy parts of the texture inside there. So um, play with those, you know, change the colors here, double click, click, uh, click one of the arrows on the gradient here, and you can click the color chip and change the color very easy and it has actually a pretty big effect. For example, if I change this left-hand color here uh, to something lighter uh, or darker, you know, it'll have a corresponding impact on the way the grid lines look. So uh, when you're done, you press OK. I think I'm going to press Cancel. Um, but that's how you edit the wallpaper texture. So you are actually off. You know, If you've got this far in the tutorial, you're ready to start rendering. And how do we do that? I'm going to hit Cancel here. Um, what you'll do is uh, make sure that your scene is looking good overall come up to scene and render scene. Notice also this is command R on my machine. Uh, it's probably like control R on a PC or something and, and command shift R uh, to render immediately. That's a handy one too. 
In render scene, what you need to do is tell it the size of your wallpaper. Of course, this is gonna depend on the monitor or the screen size you're making it for. Um, if, if I'm doing it for something like um, uh, a 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro, 2880 by 1800, that would be a really, really big uh, size wallpaper on most computers. But at least um, it'd be so big that everybody with a smaller screen could use it too. It would just look kind of small on their screen. So it wouldn't be that bad though, in most cases. I would, I would not do it with a grid. I would probably render different sizes for a grid um, because those grid lines could disappear at some, some level. Um, but if you know the size you want, the size of your screen, go ahead and just type it in here, width and height. Um, these options are great. What camera? You can have multiple cameras in a scene, but I'm just gonna keep this obviously the only camera that I have, which is look down camera. I don't wanna render an animation, so I'm just gonna leave it at single image. Um, that's normal and cool. Um, and the surface accuracy, I have mine turned down, um, but generally if you get objects that look, um, they, they should look smooth, but they look really like they're made out of polygons or triangles and stuff, you generally want to either make the objects in your scene uh, larger, like select everything in your scene and, and enlarge it, or you want to um, uh, reduce this number, you know, to like 0 0.001 or something, um, or a combination of the two. I've set the anti-aliasing to maximum. That is uh, pretty normal and um, pretty important because if you have it at none, you will not get effects like uh, soft shadows. Uh, so if you saw the image at the beginning of this video, uh, there the lamp that is overhead is casting shadows behind the uh, white spherical object. Uh, and those are really nice soft shadows. That's because I've turned on this box. Otherwise, if I turn this off, I get these hard edged shadows that really don't look realistic. Um, because the lamp size is uh, the bulb size is is bigger than the uh, almost bigger than the object And so in real life you'd have these soft shadows You can also do depth of field effects if you need to gloss and translucency are things like blurry reflection or a uh, shower door effect where uh, the translucency lets more light through but you can't really see the object behind it super well uh, those kind of effects uh, if you do need to do transparent background there's that as well now I have the, the quality uh, control here is this max rays per pixel. I also have Monte Carlo Global Illumination turned on. This is kind of cool. It's important for this scene, but maybe not important for all wallpapers. It will cause your computer to take longer to render this, but still on my computer, this only takes about, I don't know, maybe three or four minutes to render. So it's not a big deal if I'm just making a wallpaper. Uh, you can turn this off if you want. So uh, if you do turn it on, I recommend that you keep this pegged at one ray to start out with, and then go back and increase this raise per pixel for anti-aliasing, um, you know, as high as you can make it without your computer slowing down too much. Um, at a good, you know, keep this at a good level. If your image starts to look really, really grainy, that is when you want to come and increase this number. And if you max out, or if you get up to 5, 12, 10, 24, blah, 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 then is when, you know, that's when you might consider if you're using this Monte Carlo, which allows light to bounce around in a more natural way, you'd wanna start increasing this number only after you've increased this one. Okay, so advanced, I'm not using this at all, but uh, if you get pretty advanced with Art of Illusion, maybe you will. So those are the render settings. I'm not gonna render this because you know, it would just kick in there and my fan would turn on and you wouldn't be able to hear my voice probably or something like that. Uh, I'm gonna cancel, but as soon as you hit okay, it's gonna open a new window and start rendering on your computer. And what that means is your computer is gonna go into overdrive and start really, really working hard at drawing this image out. And maybe it'll finish fast, maybe it'll take a, uh, be a slow thing, but when it gets done with the process, it will have a save button at the top of the window and you can save the file as a JPEG or a PNG or, or other formats. So I'll cancel that. That is the scene. Um, if you wanna know how the um, global illumination is working, every scene has kind of a sphere wrapped around it. And that can be found under scene and then environment. Um, oh, and this is a, Crucial one, if you start a new scene, make sure ambient color is turned to black because this is an old school trick they used to use in like the 1980s and 90s uh, before they really had, um, you know, a high quality fast global illumination. So if you turn this to black, it just basically turns it off. Um, the in environment, I've set this to a solid color and I've set it to a nice light blue and that light blue becomes like my sky color basically that gets, um, that, that colors the, uh, helps tint the objects and is used to kind of bounce light around the scene. So if you are using Monte Carlo Global Illumination, make sure your sky is a nice texture. You know, it can be another texture if you want. Um, it, you can add a, a diffuse texture and, and make it put an uh, HDR image in there if you want to, uh, some cool things. So there's the environment color right there. 
Um, I think we covered it. Camera, uh, the, this overhead lamp here, oh, the vignette lamp. I'll just double click that and show you the settings. This color is actually a very light blue. And uh, I've set the intensity to 3.0. Uh, you can fiddle with this, of course. The radius, uh, since I have soft shadows turned on, um, I get to take advantage of this radius feature. So if you look at those grid lines, the radius of this, um, of this lamp is actually 2.5 grid lines. So it's actually pretty nice. I mean, it makes for a pretty big spherical lamp in the scene. And that's what makes that really, really nice vignette effect. So that's a, that's a really cool feature that I love about Art of Illusion is this ability to really easily use lights of various uh, radii. And then uh, the, decay, the decay rate of the light is uh, less than normal, so the light doesn't quite uh, wrap up as, as quickly as it otherwise would. It, it kind of helps, helps me spread out the lighting effect a bit. Uh, this type of light, you, know, you can have shadowless lights. Of course, I don't want that, um, so I'm just going to keep that at normal. But that's, the, that's it. That's it. So um, this is a kit for making wallpapers, change colors, go crazy, um, add those uh, procedural texture uh, modules and hook them together and plug them into things and, and have fun. And of course, look in the Art of Illusion manual at artofillusion.org and you'll find a lot more information on how this all works and how you can make some really, really beautiful scenes with it. All right. Hope you have fun. Enjoy using this file and let me know if you have any comments or questions. Thanks.